Hello Rust users, I'm John Stechelty with Picnic Robotics and I'll be talking about MoveIt calibration today. This is work that Yuyan at Intel started and we've seen a lot of the MoveIt community get involved and we're happy to see people using this tool. I'll start with a quick overview of the hand-eye calibration problem, which is what MoveIt calibration solves. In order to use a camera with a robot arm, you must know where the camera is in the scene. There are two cases shown here a rigidly mounted camera and a camera mounted to the end effector. Movit calibration handles both the rigidly mounted case, known as eye to hand, and the camera mounted to the end effector, known as eye in hand. In both cases, the same equation arises, which is of the form AX equals XB. Here we have a robot with a camera on it looking at a target. This is the eye in hand case. There are two transforms that we know. The transform from the base link to the end effector, shown in blue, is known from the robot kinematics. The transform from the camera to the target, shown in green, is known from the image target detector. The transform from the camera to the end effector, shown here in red, is what we're trying to determine. I'll also point out that the transform from the base link to the target is also unknown, but since these four transforms form a loop, Finding the base link to the target transform is in some sense equivalent to finding the camera to target transform. Composing any three of these transforms in the right order will give you the fourth. This is the eye in hand case, although a hand to eye calibration or eye to hand calibration is equivalent. We simply swap the target and the camera, which reverses this green arrow, and solve for the base to target or sorry, base to camera transform. For the rest of this talk, I'll focus on the eye and hand case, uh, but know that the same process can be used for both. One strategy for this eye and hand calibration would be to precisely measure the target pose in the base link frame and then do that uh, combination of the three transforms in order to get the, the fourth in the loop, back out this uh, end effector to, or camera to end effector transform. Uh, but measuring this transform precisely is not easy. Instead, a better option is to observe the target from several poses and use the combined information in all those poses in order to get the desired transform. Here are two poses for our robots. We can go ahead and put those same transforms back in the image. The blue and green transforms are both known and the red transform we want to recover. We'll call the two vision transforms AI and AJ and we'll define A as the motion of the camera from the pose I to pose J. So here A is AI composed with AJ inverse. Similarly, we'll do the same thing for the kinematics. The two base link to end effector transforms are BI and BJ, and the end effector's motion is B, which is equivalent to BI inverse composed with BJ. Now we have this little rectangle here left. We'll call the desired transform that we're trying to solve for x, and you can see that a composed with x is equal to x composed with b. And so this is where the ax equals xb equation comes from. a and b are both known. We can uh, calculate them from a sequence of poses, and then we want to solve for, for x. Of course, there's a lot of detail that I've left out. For one, a single motion doesn't contain enough information to recover a unique transform for x. But a few motions are sufficient, and about 10 or 15 are typically enough for a good calibration. Ultimately then, the calibration process consists of moving the arm through a sequence of poses. At each pose, we capture a pair of transforms, the base link to end effector transform from the robot kinematics, and the camera to target transform from the target detector. Then we put all these together into an AX equals XB solver to recover the camera to end effector transform. Next, I'll briefly discuss some options for AX equals XB solvers. There are several AX equals XB solvers that have been published and several open source implementations available. On the left are some of the published solvers and on the right are some of the open source implementations of these solvers that you can find on GitHub. Also, recent versions of OpenCV include implementations 
of all five of these published methods. Dr. Yan did a comparison of some of the open source implementations when he was first developing Move It Calibration. He generated a data set and simulation in order to compare some of the solvers that were available at the time. Since it was a simulation, the ground truth calibration was known. He moved the robot through a sequence of poses and perturbed the observed kinematic and camera transforms with some noise. He then did calibrations with increasing numbers of samples and calculated the rotation and translation error. These errors are shown in these two graphs. The left side is the rotation error, and the right side is the translation error, and the x-axis is the number of samples used in the calibration. The three solid lines in each graph are the three solvers implemented in the CRI group hand-eye package. These were the best overall results, so Dr. Yan chose this package to incorporate into Move It Calibration. The GUI lets the user choose between the three methods implemented in this package, which I'll demonstrate shortly. At this point, we've talked about some of the math and we've talked about the open source software that's available, but all the solvers I mentioned are for crunching the numbers and don't interface with the robot in any way. That's where Move It Calibration comes in. At its core, Move It Calibration is an RViz GUI plugin that then uses a target plugin for the visual target detection and a solver plugin for executing the calibration calculation. It also connects with Move Group to get kinematic transforms and to move the arm through pre recorded poses when repeating a calibration. The benefit of the plugin architecture is that these are replaceable modules so the components can be interchanged. If you decide there's a different solver that you want to use or a different visual target, you can write your own plugin for it and please contribute it back to the community. Now, this is the time in the talk where I do a live demo. Uh, of course, we're not actually live. Uh, this is pre-recorded. And unfortunately, our robot's broken at the moment, so the demo is going to be a simulation. Uh, of course, one benefit of the demonstration being a simulation is that everything I run here is available on GitHub. Here's the link, and I'll share it at the end. We'll switch over to the demo now. Once you start up the demo, the first step is to add the hand-eye calibration panel. And the next step is to struggle with arranging the panels in Arvis. So this panel has three tabs on it. Uh, the target tab is what it starts with, and this is where we define uh, the specifics for the uh, target that we're looking for uh, in the image. Um, I'm going to real quick point the camera at the target. Uh, so this is just the move group uh, motion planning panel. Um, I'm also going to add the image of the target detection here. Um, this helps to give a sense for what's going on. Um, the there's nothing being published on it just yet because we have to set up uh, the, these target parameters over here. Uh, so I'm just def putting in the appropriate parameters for the target uh, that is in the simulation. Um, and then once we choose these topics down here, you'll see that image uh, of the target detection show up. And we got a nice little uh, axis on there, so we're detecting the target well. Next, we'll go to the context panel. This is a, an eye and hand uh, calibration, so we set that. And we choose all the relevant frames. The sensor frame is the image, or the camera optical frame. Object frame is the target name. Um, end factor frame, in this case, will be the panda hand. So the, uh, the calibration that will be reported will be from the sensor frame to the end effector frame. Uh, and then we'll use the world for the robot base frame. Now this FOV uh, is a marker that gets published that shows the field of view. So we'll add this RViz tools marker array. Uh, and click a couple things here and it refreshes and it'll show up. So it's drawing the camera frustrum in the image um, so we can see what the calibration uh, looks like. 
Uh, this, of course, we don't have a calibration yet. So this is just this initial guess. And as you can see, if you, if you change this around, uh, it'll it'll move that. Um, it doesn't actually matter what the initial guess is for the, these solvers because they're all global. These are the three solvers um, that are implemented in the CRI group uh, package. Uh, we set the planning group to pan to arm so that we get the right uh, transforms and then we can take our first sample. Uh, and now we just go through and we move the move the arm. It's important to include rotation in the motions. Uh, rotation is actually what is informative in uh, cal calculating the calibration. So we'll go through here, do this a few times. <clears throat> You can see it looks like the the axis there in the camera view is moving all over. That's the location of the uh, target according to the, that current initial guess for the calibration. Obviously, that guess is wrong, uh, so that axis is is moving significantly as the arm moves. Uh, but once we have a calibration, uh, that will stay pretty still as the as the arm moves um, after that. So once you have five samples, there's enough data to calculate a calibration. Um, so right here, when we when we click take sample for the fifth time, um, you'll see that that field of view just changed. And then back here on the context tab, uh, we've got new values there. And that is the calibration that's been calculated. Um, so we'll we'll just take a couple more samples here. Now you can see that axis is not moving much as the arm moves, so that's at least an initial sign that the calibration is reasonable. Okay, so once once you've taken enough samples, seven is probably uh, too few, but I won't I won't bore you all taking too many. Uh, but you see here that the sample contains uh, two transforms, each with a translation and uh, rotation. Uh, we're going to export the calibration with the save camera pose. Um, so that exports it as a launch file that uh, will publish the transform. We can also save the joint states that we use in these seven samples. Um, so here I'm, I'm just overwriting the joint states. Um, and then later on you can reload those joint states and then you can repeat a calibration with the calibrate with recorded joint states uh, section of the panel down here. Thank you all for your attention.